Peace, everybody. It is me, Foxy D. There are a couple of things I didn't mention in yesterday's video, okay, when it came to workplace mobbing and the stages. So if you haven't watched video five, I suggest that you do, uh, just so you know what stages I'm talking about. Because I'm going to be dealing between stage two and stage three. Stage two is when the smear campaigns tend to begin and people start picking on little things that you've said and done and adding in lies to just make everything seem like you're a really bad person. And stage three is that thing called the critical incident. That's when they pump you up enough that you typically get upset and say something or do something that kind of proves that they were right all along. Okay, so in my case, stage three was the critical incident was calling my colleague an asshole. Even though I could have called him a jerk, I could have called him a pumpkin head or something really banal, and it would have likely been viewed the same way, and people would have done the same thing, because it was an awful thing to say and do. They will look at effects without looking at causes. That's pretty much what it is. So when you're being mobbed, you're viewed under a microscope. It's something that I didn't really address in video five, but I'd like to address now. So you're going to be viewed under a microscope. That means that any innocuous thing that you may do will be paid a lot of attention to. People are just going to say like, oh my God, you know, like say you're in there and, and you do one of these. Okay. Yeah. That's something in my eye. You know what? Someone will pass by and say, now she's like picking her nose and it's really gross and she's doing this and that and the other thing. Like, just to give you an example, it may not be that, um, but it could be anything. All right. And so don't try to put yourself in the box like I did the first two times I was mobbed. Um, because all you're going to do is just become nothing. And you're not nothing. You're something. Like you really are. That's why you're being mobbed. So try to remember that and keep that self-esteem really high. I just wanted to give you another word uh, to the wise, if you will, okay? And I really suggested two things, actually, globally. Let's just, not even globally, I'm going to hone in. One thing is trust your own instinct, okay? Because if you're feeling that something's off, your body will tell you, listen to your body, okay? The second thing is once you realize that you're being mobbed, go see your doctor leave the situation. And I'll tell you why. Mobbing is a very time and place a specific kind of event. Okay. This means that if you've been mobbed, doesn't mean you're going to get mobbed again. Like I said, I work for the same organization, different places. Okay. The first two times, um, again, I just kept cowering, putting myself into a box and that kind of just makes you a victim. That's not good. The, uh, I moved to another workplace and I witnessed mobbing and didn't do anything about it. And I felt just as bad as though I was being mobbed myself. Okay, so this was a person kind of organization factor. Okay, I didn't fit the organization. But bottom line also was it was very, very, very narcissistic, uh, inexistent, poor management. Okay, and if I'm going to work for somebody... I, Personally, and I suggest if you're going to work for somebody, work for someone who has the team in mind, cares about the people that are working under them, doesn't just look out for their own careers, all right? Um, so that's that. When it comes to stage three, the reason that I insist that you go get medical attention, definitely, is that your health is more important than anything else, number one. Number two, if you do intend to go back to the workplace, a little break might actually help uh, disperse this ugly ugliness of the mobbing. People will concentrate on something else. They might forget about it a little bit, not entirely. And you have a chance to plan what your responses will be and go in there maybe with some tougher and firmer boundaries. Because by stage three, I did not mention this in the last video, what tends to happen is your work starts to suffer, okay? By virtue of the mobbing, very often that you're not sleeping well, you're full of adrenaline, you're not concentrating as much. And that's when, like I said, by stage three, you typically know if management is involved because if they are involved, you're not going to have any help. Okay. So, and the managers will start to come down on you. So, well, you know what? Your work is lacking here. You're not doing as many files, et cetera, et cetera. Now in my case, because I'm an introvert and HSP and unfortunately a three-time mob B, my work actually improved. Put in my earplugs, did my job, didn't hear any of the blah, blah, didn't care. 
did some kung fu, <laughs> I kid you not, to help ground and center myself. Uh, that's a whole other series of videos. So what ended up happening in my case is that my word performance actually improved. I was doing more funnels. They were done very well. So of course, when management is involved, they don't like that. So my work was sabotaged by others. And by that I mean, they were keeping track of all the files that we did. Well, my manager was giving me files that were not being kept track of, that were already assigned to other people, but the body of them, the, the majority of the file, even though the person put their name on the Excel sheet, I had to complete the files. So it looked like I was doing less work, right? Because they were actually, the credit for those files was actually being given to the per person who originally took the files, okay? So, and another thing is, and I suspect, I can't really prove it, we had to complete our files in Excel uh, PDF format and sign them. And my boss knew how to manipulate those files. So I wonder, I, I heard nothing about that, but it is a possibility. So this is why, to me, it's essential to leave, ideally, by the time you get what's going on, okay, by stage two, try to get out of there, okay? That's heartfelt for the, the reasons that I had mentioned. One, to get your health back on track. Two, to come up with a good strategy and build some boundaries, go back to work and be a little bit more perhaps aloof, not unfriendly, right? But just build some distance, you know, between yourself and these people, be prepared with some responses, be prepared that people throw you some zingers, have some good responses back, right? So health, having, you know, building up some boundaries, building that distance, because mobbing is very time and place specific. So it doesn't mean it's going to follow you, okay? Just letting you know that. So calm down about that whole thing. Please have faith in yourself. And the other reason that I think it's good to take a break is that your work will, whether it suffers because of all of the processes that are going through your body and the stress, or... Like I said, if it doesn't suffer because of that, you know, someone's hand, likely in management, will come in and make sure your work does suffer. So why go through all of that, right? Anyhow, any questions, comments, queries, concerns, you know how to reach me and get in touch with me. Next couple of videos are going to be on toxic masculinity, toxic femininity in the workplace, and what it is just to discuss. All right? You take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.